Sign 6, Quarter 4, Week 3, Milk Base. Let's learn about the different seasons in the Philippines. This is from Learner's Packet Lip. Hello kids, it's me, Teacher Frel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and hit the notification bell for the latest video. You can also follow my Facebook page, Teacher Frel TV. For today's lesson in Science 6, we will discuss about the different seasons in the Philippines. For most essential learning competencies, discuss appropriate activities for specific seasons in the Philippines and describe the different seasons in the Philippines. You have learned from your lessons in the previous grade that weather is the day-to-day -day or short-term condition of the atmosphere. Repeating weather condition over a period of time is called the weather pattern. The average weather pattern in a certain area over a long period of time is the area's climate. Weather condition affects our everyday life. We do activities depending on the kind of weather condition in our community. For example, we do outdoor activities such as playing basketball in basketball courts or jogging with friends during sunny days that require you to go outside. We do indoor activities such as watching television, listening to radio, and reading books or magazines during rainy days that do not require you to go out. In the Philippines, climate can be divided into two distinct seasons, the dry season and the wet season. The dry season occurs from December to May. The dry season is divided into cool dry season from December to February and hot dry season from March to May. The wet season occurs from June to November. The Philippines generally has a warm temperature throughout the year. However, the amount of rain that falls in the Philippines varies. Rainfall in different regions comes at different times of the year. Why do seasons change? The Earth experiences seasonal change because its axis is tilted as it moves around the Sun. Earth's axis is tilted at an angle of 23.50 from vertical, like what you have seen in the illustration. So all countries on Earth like the Philippines experiences these changes of seasons. If the Earth's axis is not tilted, the sun would always appear directly overhead at the equator and therefore each point of the Earth's surface would experience equal length of daytime and nighttime all the time. However, the reality is the daily periods of daylight and darkness change in the length throughout the year. A common misconception most people have is that the seasons are caused by the distance of the Earth from the sun. Remember that the Earth's axis was tilted about 23.5 degrees. It is the tilt of the Earth's axis and its revolution caused seasons. Study the figure given on the left. This figure is the Earth at different positions showing the different seasons. It shows the spot of the Earth at four different positions in its orbit. In June 21 or 22, the Earth passes through a point in its orbit known as the summer solstice. The northern hemisphere is tilted directly toward the sun. In Philippines, it is the start of wet season and it is the first day of summer in the countries on northern hemisphere. The blue arrows as shown in the illustration on the left 
shows the two distinct seasons happening in the Philippines relative to the Earth's position around the Sun during its revolution. From dry season to wet season and from wet season to dry season. As you can see in the illustration, the dry season begins from December up to June and the wet season begins from June up to December. Remember that different regions in the Philippines differ in their climate due to physical and geographical conditions. The climates in the Philippines are based on average temperature and amount of rainfall. And now, let us do learning task 1. From the different information you have learned on the introduction part of this slip, answer the following questions. Answer this. First question. What are the activities in your community during dry season and wet season? And here is my example answer. The activities in our community during the dry season include outdoor activities like playing basketball, jogging, and swimming. Meanwhile, during the wet season, people engage in indoor activities such as playing music and chess. Second question, are the community activities done during dry season appropriate for wet season? Explain. My answer is no. The community activities done during the dry season are generally not appropriate for the wet season because of the differences in weather conditions. Third question, are the community activities done during wet season appropriate for dry season? Explain. My answer is yes. The community activities done during the wet season are also appropriate for the dry season, but they may not be as necessary or preferred. Fourth question. What is the relationship between seasons in the Philippines and the activities that can be done during a specific season? And my example answer is, The relationship between seasons in the Philippines and the activities that can be done during each season is mainly influenced by weather conditions, safety, and convenience. For learning task 2, Compare and contrast two distinct seasons in the Philippines by describing their different characteristics. Describe each season by writing the similarities and or differences between these seasons on a Venn diagram below. Do this on your answer sheets. So I'll show you the differences between dry season and wet season and their similarities. So for dry season, there is a hot weather, no rainfall, ideal for outdoor activities, possible droughts, and peak season for tourism. While wet season has frequent rains and typhoons, cooler temperature, risk of floods and landslides, and indoor activities are preferred. And their similarity is, both affect daily activities. For learning task 3, do this activity. Provide your answers on your answer sheets. So the activity title that you are going to do is, The Wet and Dry Season. The materials needed are, pens and notebooks. Science process skill classifying, and communicating. So here are the procedures. First, interview the members of your family. Second, fill out the table below with different activities that the members of your family do during dry and wet seasons. Third, from the activities they have identified, analyze which of them are dangerous during dry and wet seasons. And fourth, suggest some ways to reduce the risk while doing these activities. So fill out the table below. Activities done by the family members during dry season 
and wet season. And write different ways to reduce the risk in doing the activities. For learning task 4, make a poster showing different activities appropriate during dry or wet season. Choose only one from the two seasons discussed. Make use of available bond paper and coloring materials in making your poster. Explain briefly at the back portion of your poster the relation of these activities to the season in the Philippines you have chosen. Please be guided by the scoring rubrics below in making your poster. So here is the scoring rubrics in making your poster. The different criteria are content, graphics relevance, and grammar. For learning test 5, Make a journal of activities for the whole year using the format below. List down all activities that you do during dry and wet seasons. Be creative in making your personalized journal. So kids, I'll just give you some examples of activities that I do during dry and wet season. I'll just only give the half of the year activities. You are going to make a journal of your monthly activities from January to December. As you can see in the calendar, from January to May is dry season. And June is half dry and half wet. Then from July to November is wet season. Then December is half wet and half dry season. And here are my examples. January, it's my birthday. February, it's our church anniversary. March, we will be going to Palawan. April, my mom's birthday celebration. May, my father's birthday celebration. June, it's our church outing. So kids, did you get it? For learning task 6, you have learned from today's lesson the different appropriate activities and the two distinct seasons of the Philippines. After learning this, do the next activity on your answer sheets. Now answer this. First question, what are some of the programs and projects of the local government in your community that should be planned during dry season and wet season? Explain. Your answer may vary for this question. Second question, do fishermen and farmers also adjust their activities during these two distinct seasons in the Philippines? Cite some activities or instances on how they adapt to the seasonal changes. So your answers may vary for these activities. And for learning task 7, read the following questions and statements carefully. Give the correct answers for the items without choices and letters of the chosen answer for items with multiple choices. Write your answer on your answer sheet. Number 1. What do you call a period of the year that is usually characterized by a particular kind of weather? Give your answer. Very good! The correct answer is... Season Number 2. What are the two seasons in the Philippines? Very good! The two seasons in the Philippines are Dry season and wet season Number 3. What is the all-year-round climate present in the Philippines? Very good! The all-year-round climate is Tropical climate. Number four. Which of the following is a factor that affects the season of the Philippines? A. Climate. B. Neighbor country. C. Oceans. D. Location of the Philippines. What is the correct answer? Very good. The correct answer is letter D. Location of the Philippines. Location of the Philippines affects the season. Number 5. What season is characterized by hot and cloudless days? Very good! 
The season characterized by hot and cloudless days is dry season. Number 6. What do you think will happen if rice farmers plant their crops on April or May? A. The plants will grow faster. B. The plants will be infested. C. The plants will have supply of water. D. The plants will be dry. What is the correct answer? Very good! The correct answer is letter D. The plants will be dry because April and May is dry season. Number 7. Which activities could you do during the wet season? A. Planting B. Drying crops C. Swimming D. Going to a picnic What is the correct answer? Very good! The correct answer is Letter A. Planting Number 8. When is the peak of wet season in the Philippines? A. November to December B. June to August C. April to May D. July to September What is the correct answer? Very good! The correct answer is Letter D. July to September is the peak of wet season in the Philippines. Next, write true if the statement is correct and false if not. Number 9. Farmers consider the season when planting and in drying their crops. Is it true or false? Very good! The correct answer is true. Number 10. Philippines has summer season. Is it true or false? Very good! The correct answer is false. The Philippines does not have a summer season. We call it dry season. Remember, in the Philippines, climate can be divided into two distinct seasons, the dry season and the wet season. The dry season occurs from December to May. The dry season is divided into cool dry season from December to February and hot dry season from March to May. The wet season occurs from June to November. The Philippines generally has a warm temperature throughout the year. However, the amount of rain that falls in the Philippines varies. Rainfall in different regions comes at different times of the year. So kids, do you understand our lesson for today? Wow! Good job! Kids, I hope you learn a lot from this lesson. Until our next topic, bye-bye kids! Thanks for watching!